To begin this exercise, download the Photo and Jump Practice folder from the Moodle page. When you download this folder, pay close attention to all the items that I'm giving to you. First off, there's an InDesign file that has all of the articles, cut lines, decks, headlines, everything you need already placed inside of it. Additionally, this InDesign file has the paragraph styles created for you as well. Along with this, a couple of the articles are going to require some photographs, and I've provided those photographs for you here. Everything you need for this should be found within the folder. The only other thing you need to have completed before you start this one is your broadsheet library. When we finish this up, you're going to be placing bylines and other things within the uh, overall document, and these should come from the library of things that you've already created. So to get started, on the first page, we've got four different articles, and they're already laid out roughly where they need to go. The second page is going to be blank, and this is where we're going to jump the rest of our articles. At the bottom of this page, I've given you some spacing for dummy advertisements. We don't want to move any of these around. Keep them exactly where they are. We're going to flow all of the articles around them onto the second page. On this first page, I can see that I've got the four articles laid out, and there's not a lot of breathing room between each of the articles. So the first thing we need to do is to give some space between the left and the right hand side. Using your black arrow selection tool, click and drag and select the two articles, their headlines, decks, and the body copy, and then find the center point and click and drag to bring it in just a little bit. Notice that, if I zoom in here, our new edge is right here, and it's away from the gutter. We want to do the same thing to the articles on the right-hand side. So zooming back out, click and drag and select everything on the right-hand side. Find the center point and drag this to the left just a little bit as well. Now I've got a much nicer, thicker space between the two columns that are here. Additionally, we can add a line or a rule in between these two. Select your line segment tool. I'm going to set at the very top my line color, the fill color to be none. I'm going to set the line color to be black and we'll set it to be one point. Now I can draw a vertical line going straight down the middle of my column right there. This will give me much more space and a little more visual delineation between those two. Additionally, I've got two articles on this left-hand side that are running together. So let's grab our line segment one more time and drag a line between those two. It doesn't have to go all the way. We'll stop it right there. The next thing I can work on is going to be shoring up the design for both of these articles. Zooming into this first article, the first issue that I see is that my headline has a photograph between itself and the body copy which means we need to swap both of these out, keeping my photograph nice and large, but not interfering or not getting in the way of those. So I'm going to grab my headline, drag it down, and then grab my photograph and place it up here at the top. Let's also do the same for the cut line that's below it. Now since this is our, my main article, I want to make sure my headline is nice and large. So I'm going to select it. I can even center it. Let's make the size of this as large as we can without taking up too much room. That looks good. Finally, I can select my deck and bring this down, and we'll still keep it the uh, hammer style that it needs. The next thing I can do is to place my photographs within this area. The photographs are clearly indicated on their names, so with the top one selected, I can go to File and Place. Let's locate those photos in my newspaper design jump. Here's the bomb investigation one. We'll say open and it's placed inside of here. The next thing I need to do is to scale this down so I can see it and fit it nicely to that option. So at the very top click on this option here. And this will scale it down and I can click on the center and center it up much better. Let's do the same for the second one. Clicking on this, go to file in place choose bomb investigation number two and say open. This one we can scale down a little bit more bringing it down and we can also auto fit it at the very top. That looks good for there. 
Remember, anytime you need to scale or manually position something, make sure you hold down your shift key and resize it from there. We never want to have a photograph that's being skewed or stretched or otherwise distorted. The next thing we can do is to give our article a little bit more space as well. You can do this the same way we added space between the uh, two different articles. Select your body copy, click and drag the edges inward, and by having a little bit more space, even down at the bottom, this will call more attention to the photographs and the main article. If we wanted to, we can even make our photograph slightly larger to fill in this space as well to make it much more interesting. Now when we do this, let's make our cut line a little bit larger too, and I'm going to move this up. That's looking good. Now when we do this, pay close attention that now we've kind of broken the structure of our columns underneath. That's okay. The reason why this still works is because overall everything is still in a nice gridded structure and we've got all of this article treated as one particular unit. Now we can focus on the second article down at the bottom. My notes indicate that I want this article to be in a three column bastard measure. Here's what that means. I'm going to remove the photograph and cut line for now and place them off to the side. Whenever you place something into bastard measure, this means take the article and stretch it across all of the columns necessary. In this case, it's going across four different columns. However, I want the article or the body copy to only take up three columns. So with the article selected at the very top, set this number to be three. Again, we've got the article in three, even though it's stretched across four different columns now. Now we can set our deck to be the width of this one column. We can bring it down. I wanted this to be a raw wrap, so I'm going to bring that down to there. And then we can resize it as necessary. Remember, you can turn on text wrapping to make sure everything fits well. And we can adjust the size of our text to make sure that fits well. So that looks good. We'll bring this up just a little bit as well. We've got some space up here at the top, so even our article can be brought up to be even with the top of our line. That looks good. And then finally, let's place our photograph back in here. Remember, we're working in three columns, so I want this photograph to be placed inside of here, but the size of it needs to be three columns, or this, excuse me, one column wide, the width of there. We'll place our deck, or our cut line inside of here. And of course, for both of these, we need to turn on our text wrap so that it wraps around there. Now we can place our photo. With it selected, go up to File and Place. Choose the Obama JPEG and scale him down to have him fit inside of here. The other thing to pay attention to can be some of the distances between here. Like I can see my cut line actually looks okay, but there's a lot of space between those two. So I'm going to zoom in and make sure that there's only one baseline distance between those. That looks good for that. We'll zoom back out. Now let's clean up some of the articles on the left hand side. We'll zoom into this top article. Right off the bat, I can see that this headline is way too short in, in terms of the size of it. This needs to be at least three or four lines deep. So I'm going to move everything else out of the way for now. We'll make this a little bit larger or taller. Let's readjust the size of our text until it runs about three lines deep. I think that looks good. We'll even adjust the leading to bring it out some. With that done, let's bring back in our deck and our body copy. Again, giving it about one point distance between the two. That looks good. Even our deck, I see it has a widow or an orphan, so we can fix that as well. Down here at the bottom, this article does not have a deck to it. So we're going to treat it just as a regular headline. Make it a little bit larger to see if we can get away with a couple more lines and then increase the leading so that looks better as well. In looking at these two articles together, I'm going to zoom back out. 
Now we put a line between the leftmost articles over here. Over here, we don't really want to add another line. There's a better way of doing this. Instead of having the two articles run so close together, I'm going to even these up by bringing this one down. So select the body copy, let's bring it down, and let's just add a little bit more space between these two. Having that visual space is enough to indicate that these are two separate articles. Even zooming out this far, you can tell that these are nice and well-defined and they look really good. So this is the way our front page should be looking. The next thing we're going to add are our bylines and then our jump lines, and then we're going to jump these articles to the next of the page. To add the bylines to your page, open up your broadsheet library that we created, and let's zoom into each of the articles. You can choose any of the bylines that you want to work with. I'm going to choose this middle one, drag it in, and let's place it spanning the entire width of the first article column. So there's that there. As with the other ones, we want to have a little bit of a distance. So notice that those are kind of running very close together. So let's click and drag down and give this one more line of distance. All that looks good. If anything, we could probably bring the article up on mine just a little bit more so it doesn't have too much space taken up. That looks much, much better. Whoop, too much, too close. There's that one. To add a jump line to something, we need to create a new jump line. So to do this, grab your type tool, let's click and drag and create a new text box. Now the jump lines, I've given you a couple of examples in one of the handouts for the rules. And there's a variety of different ways you can style this. But basically, they need to say something like C, then the title of the, the jump article. For instance, this one's going to be called Bombing. Page 2. So they need to say where we're going to find the rest of the article and what page it's going to be on. For my formatting, I'm going to set this to be all bold, maybe even bold italic. That looks good. I want to set mine off to the left-hand side and make it slightly larger. So that looks good. Notice that it's at the end of my article. It also spans the entire width of it. So let's turn on some text wrap for this one. Another thing you may wish to do is if you want to have your jump line at the bottom of your text box, here's the trick to doing that. With your text box selected, you can go up to Object, Text Frame Options, and inside of these options, set your vertical justification to align it at the bottom. Turn on Preview, you can see it will now be at the bottom of your page. We can say OK, and there it is set there. With this created, we can click and drag. Let's add that to our style sheet library. And I'm going to call this a jump line. Now I can use this jump line for my other articles. Go into the second article. Let's add a headline, or excuse me, a byline. Place it again right at the beginning of our article. And then span it out so that it takes up the first whole line. Then we can go to the end of our article, and let's add the jump line to the very end. There it is set there. All we need to do is to resize it appropriately. Let's maybe make it a little bit closer in. And the, size, the uh, article title for this one is Obama. We'll keep it again to page two. Going up to our topmost article. Let's add a jump line to it. This one's going to be called NFL. Forgot to add a byline to it, so let's add this byline. Drag it out. That looks good. And then finally add a byline and a jump line to this one. So here's a byline for here. Oops. Maybe get a little bit closer, that looks good. And let's do a jump line. Place it at the very bottom. And this one's going to be called Winter. So to zoom out and look at the entire page, we've got four articles. This first article has two photographs that are centered up and not stretched and not distorted. The headline is nice and large, and it's going to be a hammer style. The article is running uh, one column deep, and it's got a lot of space around it. It has a byline and a jump line. 
Both of my photographs also have cut lines. Article number two is three column bastard measure. The headline and deck are in raw wrap style with a byline and a jump line and my photograph is in the center giving it a U shape expanding the entire width of that second column. My two articles on the right hand side have been readjusted to give a little bit of space between them and the headlines are readjusted with a byline and a jump line. Headlines readjusted down here as well with the byline and the jump line. Now we can deal with jumping this article to the next page. To jump an article, use your selection tool, the black arrow. I'm going to zoom into the first article. When you click on the text box for your body copy, click on the little plus red sign at the very bottom indicating some overset text. When you click on that, notice that it will follow your cursor. Now I can hold down my spacebar and navigate to the second page. I'll go back into normal mode. With that still following your cursor, you can click and drag and create a new text box, and this will jump the text into this text box. Now looking at the text that I've indicated to you, this text box should be four columns wide but we're going to set this into three column bastard measure. So four columns wide, up at the very top, choose three for your column distance. Now I can roughly resize it to the size necessary. Remember, later on at the very end, we'll come back and readjust for widows and orphans. The next thing we need to do is to add a jump headline. So grab your type tool, we'll click and drag up at the very top, Jump headlines don't have to span the entire width of your column. Instead, they can just be one or two words, nice and bold, and indicate the start of your text. So in our case, we told that the jump headline was going for the, the first article was going to be bombing, so B-O-M-B-I-N-G. We'll choose maybe a large or a medium size. Looks like medium is a pretty good size for that. And that's all that we really have to do. As with the other headlines, we can bring this down, give it a little bit closer to the article, and that's roughly where we'll replace that one. Let's go do the second one. Going to the very top, click on the body copy text box, carefully click on the little plus arrow at the bottom. I hold down my space bar, so that lets me drag back to here. Let's place this article oops, on the left hand side, excuse me, right hand side. We'll click and drag, and that'll go two columns wide. Now this one is going to be two columns, not in bastard measure. The reason why we want to put these in two different column widths is to aid in their distinction between the two articles. Let's also give this one a headline and I'll show you what I mean. So the headline for this one is going to be Obama. If I had both of these articles side by side like this, and this one was not in bastard measure, so if we went four over four columns, it would look like this. In looking at both of these, they kind of run together. It's very difficult to distinguish this article from this one. So if I place one of these, particularly this one, in bastard measure, excuse me, let's go down to three, that adds a little bit more difference and makes it easier to distinguish them. Additionally, I can select this article and give it a little bit more space between those two just like we did with the first articles on the first page. Now I can definitely tell that both of these are two different sets of articles and I've got no, uh, no problem distinguishing the two. So with that done, let's jump the other articles as well. Going to this very top, this NFL one, select the body copy, carefully click on the red arrow, hold down your space bar as you can navigate when you let go of your space bar, you can click and drag, now this one, we're going to keep it in four columns. One, two, three, four. Fits nicely there. Let's make a copy of our headline up here. This one's going to be called NFL. For this NFL one, we need to have a photograph on this second page. So I'm going to grab my rectangle frame tool. We'll click and drag. Let's set a horizontal photograph on this right hand side. For now I'm going to fill it in with black just so you can see it. And we'll place it up here at the top of our column.
column. We can bring it in a little bit. As with all of our photographs, we need to turn on text wrapping. And let's place it inside of here. Go up to File, down to Place. This is going to be the NFL Apology JPEG. We'll scale him down. And let's go get a cut line and place it below here. So select this, Command C to copy it. Come back to here, Command V to paste it. And have this cut line running across. Now for this cut line, we've got a unique problem. I need to get information about this photograph and place it inside of here. Remember, if you ever need to type your own cut lines, simply answer the questions of who, what, when, where, and why that's inside of this photograph. However, if a cut line is provided for you, you can find that information inside of the photograph's metadata. Here's how to open that up. If you go to the folder that I provided you, let's open up that NFL Apology JPEG in Photoshop. Once you're in Photoshop, go up to File, down to File Info. The File Info is where you can get an image's metadata. Here I can find the articles, or the, excuse me, the author and the description of it. So let's copy the author. Select all of this, Command C to copy it. Jump back into InDesign. And here's where I can put that information, Command V to paste it. Go back to Photoshop. Select the description, Command C to copy it. Jump back into InDesign, and let's replace this cut line right there. With that done, all we have to do now is to sure up the size of our cut line dialog box. And that looks good for that one. The other thing you could do to this, since this is on the inside page, all of these photographs and everything on here will be printed in black and white. So returning back to Photoshop one more time, Oops, excuse me. There it is. We'll close out our metadata. Go up to Image, down to Mode, and change it to be a grayscale image. This is going to ask you to discard the color information. We'll discard it, and that'll automatically change it to grayscale. When I go to File and Save, this will save our document. We can close it out. Jump back into InDesign. And if I go back into normal preview mode, you'll see that there's a little warning sign at the very top. This means that an edit has been changed. If I double click this, you can see it's now black and white. And I'll zoom back out. And let's get the final article. Coming back up here, click on the body copy for your forecast, the little plus sign. Jump back down here, we'll click and drag add this article right there. This article should be in two columns. We'll readjust the size of it. And then we'll give it a headline of weather. The final thing I need to do is to readjust everything on here so that it fills up nicely. This should give you just enough place placing to have a good amount of space between the articles. Having that space is okay. I can see weather can be brought down a little bit more. And I bet the Obama one has plenty more space to be set off in here. If you find yourself having too much space, here's where we can go back into our main article and maybe we can adjust something to give it a little less or more space. For instance, I can see I've got several inches down here. To fill in this space, let's go back to our first page article and maybe I can cut some from the bottom. So I'm going to zoom in, select the bottom most text, and let's bring it up. Doing this will push a couple of lines into there. Maybe we can even readjust our cut line. That'll give us even more space between here. Going back here, let's readjust the height of this one to fill in. That's looking much better. Let's see if we can do a few more for this one. Even the weather, the winter one, we can bring it up a couple of lines. Select my cut line, bring it up. Now when we go back in here, this will bring both of these together much, better, much more. 
That's looking good. Readjust winter. Bring that up. Excellent. So with all of these now placed within here, see if I can fill in my NFL one. I can see it's got a little bit more room. If I'm running out of room or running way too close, this is where I can readjust the size of my photograph and buy myself a couple of inches, at least a couple of lines. Pull that down. Or I can come back up to my main article. Let's see if I can pull the weather one down a little bit more. Maybe make this one smaller. Let's add a little bit more room to the NFL one. Pull it down. That'll make both of these seem a little bit better balanced-wise. Coming back to here, that bought me enough space for this one to get it to be nice and evened up. That looks good. Same way for my bombing one. I can bring that down. My main concern <clears throat> is that my articles fit to the very end without having any overset text. They fill in without having too large of a gap. Now there will be one large open space right here. In our next exercise, we'll talk about filling these in with what's called a house ad. But for now, there should be an open space if there's one for yours. The rest of these should have just minimal amount of space between each of the articles as they're placed. Once you've finished this up, don't forget to go back in and fix any widows and orphans. I won't belabor that and show you that for this one because you already know how to do it. To save this, naturally we need to go to File and Save the InDesign file, but you're going to turn in a PDF version. So let's go to File, down to Adobe PDF Presets, and we're going to choose the smallest file size. This is going to save it as a regular PDF. You can add your name to the title if you want, but when you hit Save, it'll bring up the PDF options. For now, we'll just hit Export and keep the default options and say OK to that or any other text that come up. That PDF is what you'll upload to Moodle once you've finished.